Hi, I'm Nate. You're watching Photo Learningism. Let's continue the KDEN Live tutorial series digging into effects. I wanted to focus on transform and rotoscoping for a fly through effect. It's going to be awesome. Stay with me. So once again, I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. If this is your first time joining in, I do a lot of work on this channel to build a community of learning to surface the cheap or free art technologies so you can know about them and make good use of them. Thank you so much for joining in. I wanted to get into KDEN Live. If you've not seen KDEN Live before, I'm going to put a card up there to the uh, the playlist for this series so you can get a good sense of how this tool works and the amazing things it can do for you. It covers editing and color grading and we're getting into effects. So awesome things to, to dig into and make good use of for your video editing needs and to a degree even some visual effects. So we're going to get into that right now. So I made some really, really kind of cheesy video here just to demonstrate a fly through effect. And we're going to use two main things today to get it done. We're going to be using rotoscoping for masking, and we're going to be using transform to simulate motion. And I'll show you where this is going, but uh, hang in there. All right, so let's start by, let's just make this a little bigger on this side here. I'm going to get into effects. And we're going to start by searching out for rotoscoping. I'm going to drag that on top of my clip and then click it so I get my properties. This is the keyframe timeline. So this is how I'm going to uh, animate really if I wanted to. And we'll explain how we do that. Uh, you can actually go watch the video specific to how the effects interface works if that's helpful. I'll put a card up for that. But for now, we have rotoscoping. We need to start by actually adding in our points. All right, and we're going to focus in on this space. So I'm going to get, let's see, I'm actually just going to park my points and we'll make them more accurate in a moment. All right now, I'm using the left mouse button. This is Windows. And the right mouse button is the final one. Now, initially, this is not anywhere near what we want to look like because when you first add a masking shape, it assumes you want only what's in the object. We want to use the invert option and flip that around <laughs> so that now the space that I've marked off is transparent. We've cut a hole in something. And now I want to go refine it. So I'm going to get closer to what I've done. And I've noticed this is kind of like a kind of a weird bug just so you're aware of it as you use that zoom in and zoom out this shape does not perfectly align with what you've drawn initially just be aware of that and um if you're expecting it, it's less weird it's not exactly right but you know expect it and, and at least it's not quite so weird as you work with it i'm going to zoom in one more time all right so the way we adjust this is the larger points are how you move the ones you initially set and then there actually is a Bezier option for each point on each side of it. So I could get really specific with how this is going to fit around the curves of my hand. And I don't want to spend too, too much time on this because you can get the idea and just takes some patience and time and I just want to simulate the concept and I'll show you I went ahead and built out some of this a little more finely so you can get a good idea of the final result but that's the initial upfront piece of this is you want to create a mask with rotoscoping you want to add in your points and then get them sharp get them as tight as you can based around what you're trying to work with now the next step here is I can't hold myself perfectly still. I wanted to do this with video to demonstrate the concept. So my hand floats a little bit. And to accommodate for that, we're going to use the keyframing timeline. So as I drag through over here on the right, you'll see already, OK, well, my shape is no longer on point. So what I can do is I can add a keyframe. And I can correct it. I can animate in where that should be. 
and I may have to make adjustments to some of my points as well. I can do that too, just to make sure that it stays proper within that space. And again, this part may take some patience depending on how accurate you want it to be. If you want it to be super realistic, it's gonna take some time. <laughs> but you can leverage the power of tweening, the power of keyframe animation to take care of some of that. It doesn't have to be every single frame because that would just be you'd be doing it to the end of your natural <laughs> the end of your natural life but um, you can leverage that ability to do it in pockets and I found that to work very well all right so you need to set up the animation and accommodate for the motion if you're doing video it is simpler doing still frame but that's not as fun or interesting if you're looking to do a kind of a visual effect in a, in a movie type of format um, so set that all up and to kind of demonstrate what this will do ultimately, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy and then I'm going to paste in a copy of that effect. Reason being is that I'm just gonna to try to show you, kind of give you something behind there so we can have something to look at. <laughs> All right, so to do that, I'm going to add a transform. It is here in the effects, or there's actually a shortcut for this where you can right click and insert an effect. And it looks like it's running off the screen a little bit here. So what we'll do here then in that case then is just use the traditional way. So we'll look for a transform. There it is. I'm going to drag that onto this one. And Really, this is all the same keyframe, uh, so there's not really animation yet to do. I'm going to back off so we can see a little better here. Okay, so this clip, this is what I'm working on here, these, these four corners. I'm just going to hold shift and keep the aspect ratio and then drag this in. There we go. So we can now see that there is something behind that. All right. And then as I play through this, you can clearly see that I've cut it out, it's not perfect, I move my hand, and it's, it's not as tight as it should be, but you can get the idea that we have successfully cut something out. So now another aspect of this is adding in feathering. And the reason for that being is, if something is too refined, too pristine, it starts to look fake, because that's not how things look as you go about normal life. There's a little tiny bit of blur, usually to simulate uh, things as they move because the eye can't catch them that quickly. So what you do to make it blend just a bit and to accommodate for that is you add a little bit of feathering. Now we don't want loads because then that overdoes it, but I found about three or four in this case is good. And that starts to blur the, uh, the rotoscoping effect just a bit so that it blends rather than looks hard cut. All right, and then the final piece of this really is the actual fly, right? The the motion. So again, we use a transform effect on top of our initial clip, and I'm gonna back out a lot, about as much as I can. And we want to start where we are because that's position one. We want to go all the way to the end on the keyframe timeline, add another keyframe, and this is where we do our magic. And that we want to make this really, really big. Because the idea here is we're flying inside the hand. And we're probably going to have to make this big a couple of times here to get that through. It's also harder to see this way. <laughs> I feel like we're getting there. That's my face. There it is. Okay, so I think that's the idea. Let's check it. There we go. That's the basic concept. You'll notice 
because you're probably going to ask, <laughs> well, what's this extra stuff? Well, that is actually because I did not take the time to do the rotoscoping really, really tight. Okay, the blur you can see the spaces that I did, even right here where it overlaps, looks really good because as it gets closer, it's naturally increasing that little bit of blur so that it kind of has that bokeh effect where you're moving foreground to background and that adds more realism because as things get closer and there's something else the eye is already focusing on, what's super close is not going to be in focus. So that's true to life and that helps sell the effect as it happens. All right, that's the more of that feathering that I showed you how to do. And that's really the gist. You could get fancier with this. I was trying to play with the concept of kind of flying in and it was impossible to loop it. I couldn't quite figure that out yet, um, but uh, I want to. <laughs> So to show you what we've ended up with, what I ended up with doing this and working at it quite a bit is over here. And this is the project file. You can see the different uh, rotoscopes that went on and how I attempted to fly through my hand and show that was also going on in my hand already again and to match it up um, within. Uh, I didn't spend so much time on the third layer. You can see how there's a little bit of float along the bottom because again, the idea was go inside the hand, make that look good, and then maybe throw something behind there, but it just kind of goes on and on and on and on. Um, and it was a lot of work to get the first two done. <laughs> so that's the idea. And you can see how that blurring effect is pretty true as I pass through. Looks very seamless. That's my finger going by. And that's the idea of flying through something. Uh, you may need less feathering uh, depending on how fast you're going. Um, again, that's a thing you're going to want to tweak carefully and just watch and monitor and see. You may have noticed that it's a little choppy as I play through. That's just because we're doing this in real time with these effects. I did bring up the rendered clip here just so we can kind of see how smooth that really is when that is finally done. There you go. So it's pretty cool, right? You get some animation and you get some uh, visual effect value out of a free open source tool, which is really awesome. And it looks really good. The colorization could obviously use some work. This was a really, really simple video. In fact, I did not have this camera that I'm working on right now. I was out somewhere and I used the built-in webcam because this is just a proof of concept. So the video quality leaves much to be desired, but the proof of concept I feel is still very, very uh, powerful and in, in, in how it applies. So that's the concept. Thank you so much for checking that out. If this was helpful to you, please give me a thumbs up so I can know that it was uh, good and that uh, it resonated with you. <laughs> uh, also consider leaving a comment, uh, not just for me, but for the whole community so we can make ourselves stronger. We can ask our questions and find our answers and grow together. Also consider subscribing so you don't miss out on the awesome, awesome things that we do in this channel and will do in the future. And I thank you so much for joining in and being a part of this community. I'll see you at the next video.